Hey Procreators, it's Kristen and in this tutorial I'm going to walk you through how I created this holiday greeting card um, where it looks like it is cut out and in paper layers and then how to um, put this into a card template that you can print and actually create your own cards from. So I'm just going to add my screen protector here. And um, I came up with this idea because I have a ton of these cards that I got from the Dollar Tree here in the US. And I wanted to, um, I really don't use these like I thought I would. So I wanted to make some of my own cards and I figured I could use the envelopes for them. So I took the measurements and I added everything into Procreate and I'll walk you through how I did that. Um, if you don't have this size card, you can do the same thing, but just put in your measurements. Um, so you could do like a five by seven card or whatever card size. So um, I measured this card and I don't know if you notice here, but when I fold it, it has a little bit of a lip hanging over in the back and a little bit printed on the back there. So um, I just wanted you to keep that in mind for when we're doing this. But this card is 5.25 inches um, by four inches, but when it's open, it's 7.75 inches. So that's where we have that little, we're gonna have that little bit of overlap. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that aside. And um, another thing I want to point out is that if you are printing these, I mean, these are great just to send digitally, but if you are printing them, um, I got three very different um, outcomes in color in terms of um, they were all made from the same exact canvas. I just used different types of paper to print these. So um, this one was a regular cardstock, but it has a little bit of tooth to it. So you can see that did not print as nicely as the others. This one was also cardstock um, and it printed a little bit more vibrant like the blacks are blacker and the reds are brighter but this was a smooth white cardstock and then the one that printed the best was actually copy paper not cardstock at all um, this print really clearly and nicely um, you could really see all of the shadows really well um, but this was just bright white copy paper um, so if you want the printing to come out the best, you might want to print it onto copy paper and then maybe glue it onto cardstock. I'll leave that up to you. But the printer that I use is a um, HP Envy 6000 series. So um, it's not the best printer out there, but um, I usually don't do a lot of printing. So let's get into designing this. First, uh, let me close out of here. And we want to create a canvas that is going to be our template. So we're gonna create a new canvas. So let's go to the plus sign here in the top right. And we're going to tap this little um, icon there. And it's asking us to put in the width and the height. I wanna use inches. So I want the width to be 11 inches because the size of a normal sheet of um, letter paper here is um, 8.5 by 11 inches in the US. So if you're somewhere else, you would just put in um, the dimensions of your paper. Okay, so in the height, we're gonna do 8.5. And make sure the DPI says 300. And we wanna have 300 DPI because that is best for printing. Anything lower than that, and you might run into some blurriness or um, pixelated images when you print. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and hit create, and that is going to create our canvas for us. Now within this canvas, I also want to um, add in uh, like a template area for me to know like where uh, to print and cut the card out. So. To do that, I am going to, um, I'm just gonna go and choose a color. You can choose any color you like. Um, let me go and choose, I don't know, maybe like a light blue. And I'm gonna drag and drop that in to fill the canvas. I'm going to then go to the arrow 
Let me zoom out so you can see the whole shape. And down here at the bottom, you wanna make sure you're on uniform. And then if you go to snapping, you wanna make sure snapping and magnetics are both turned on because that is going to help you line everything up to be really even. Then I'm gonna take my um, pencil or finger and outside of the box, I'm gonna tap and start to move it, trying to keep that yellow line there because that's telling me that that is in the middle. And then I'm going to move it, let me put it back to the beginning. I'm gonna move it so um, the middle dots are on the edge. So that will snap like that, it snaps and then it might be hard for you to see but there is a yellow line coming down and that means that is directly in the center so now we can tap off of that so now we know that this will kind of be our folding line when we go to make our card and i'm going to go and turn this opacity down so let's go to the end and slide that opacity slider down because i just want it to be faint i don't want it to be um, really noticeable and take away from the artwork okay so now let's make another box for our actual card size. So let's again add a layer and drag and drop in a color. And this time I'm going to enter in the dimensions that I want. So um, in the beginning, when we created the canvas, we were allowed to use inches, but this way uh, you can only use pixels. So we're going to convert inches to pixels and that's really simple. It sounds harder than it is. But all we're going to do is take the inches, so we have um, whatever size inch, inches we want, length and width, and multiply that by 300 because 300 is the DPI that we're using. And that will give us um, the size and pixels we, that we want. So um, the size of the card that we wanted, if you remember from the beginning, is um, when we open this up, was 7.75 by 5.25. So 7.75 times 300 is 2,325. So this is how we're gonna get that, this box into that shape. We're gonna go to the arrow and we're just gonna tap at one of these corner dots and then we have this little uh, number box come up. We're gonna check the link to make sure that it's not linked and we're gonna put in our 2,325 pixels. Okay, now you see that automatically cropped that off for us. And then um, the 5.25 times 300 is 1,575. And you see that crop that there. So now we can move this to the center and um, when you have the magnetics and the snapping on, you can see when it's dead centered, you will get this yellow um, crosshairs there, and then you can let go. And now I'm also going to turn the opacity down on this one so I could just barely see. And then I'm going to merge these two, and I'm going to name this template layer. So now I can turn this off and on if I want. Um, if I need it to be a little bit darker, I can duplicate that. And I'm just gonna keep it like that uh, for the tutorial's sake so you can see um, the difference of where the card is. So this square right here, or actually rectangle, is going to be the front of our card and this is going to be the back of our card. So we wanna make um, our artwork um, inside of uh, this size square here. So the actual dimensions of this are four, what did we say? Four inches by 5.25, four inches this way by 5.25 inches this way. I'm sorry, throwing all this math at you. I, I am not a math person. So um, it took me a while to, to work this out for the tutorial. So bear with me, we'll get there. So we wanna create, um, a face of the card and also um, a back of the card. Now it's up to you whether you want to have um, a back on the card or not. 
So like in my little example card, where did I put that? I lost my little example card. Um, oh, here it is. Um, the back, they had it printed on the front and left the back blank. But on the cards that I did, I printed on both, um, both sides. So uh, first we're going to do the red background and then I'll show you how to add the craft paper and then how to add the plaid paper and then how to add our text. Okay, so first we want to um, use this size box for our red paper. So in a new layer, let's go and choose a red. Let's go to classic and going to move my red, make it a little bit darker, and fill the canvas with that. And again, I'm going to put in those same dimensions. Remember to unlink it. And our dimensions were 2325 by 1575. Okay, and we're just going to Move that there. Okay. Um, and now we can, if you wanted to, you can turn off this template for now um, or leave it on, whichever you prefer. Uh, now I want to add a little bit of a pattern to this. So if you have a pattern brushes or instead of um, dropping the color in, you could always also just add in some pattern digital paper if you had that also. So now I'm going to choose a brighter red and in the brushes, um, I'm under textures, which is one of the brush sets that comes with Procreate and go to the diagonal and I have my size set. Let's do like 80. And I'm just going to brush over. my card until that's all covered. Um, now, if you don't want this to go off of the card onto your um, background of your paper, because that's just a waste of ink, what we can do is um, put that in a separate layer or we could have alpha locked that. So let me undo that and show you that if we alpha lock this, so you can tap it and choose alpha lock and then color over. You can also do the same thing by using um, another layer on a clipping mask. But for this, we'll just use alpha lock because we're not gonna be changing this too much. Okay, so that just has a little bit of a, um, a different uh, shade in that color. And that is our background pattern area. So now I want to add a piece of craft paper on the front of the card. And again, if you have um, digital papers that you use, you can feel free to use those or patterned brushes. Um, but I'm going to show you where I get my free papers to use this from. So I'm gonna open Safari and let me go back here, I was already on there. So I'm gonna to go to the Pixabay site. So it's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. And this is where you can get um, royalty-free images and use them personally or commercially in your work. And we're just gonna type in brown paper. And here you can see um, they have some images of brown papers and the one that I used I believe was this one here so I'm just going to tap on it and it's asking me to sign in um, it'll give you the the uh, user information so you can follow them credit them whatever you like in your work um, crediting is not required but it is nice to uh, let others know um, where you're that you're attributing them so i'm going to hit free download and it gives you the choice of um, what size you want 
but I am just going to hit download. Uh, it's asking me if I'm a robot, not today. Okay, and now it's asking me if I wanna view it or download it. So you can view it and save it from there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit download and it will, um, you'll see this little icon here um, did a little bounce and that means that if I tap that, my download is there already. But before I get there, I'm gonna go back and get the other paper that I want. So let's go back to the search box. And this time um, you can type in whatever pattern you're looking for, whether it's plaid, Christmas plaid, um, Hanukkah pattern, whatever you like. But I put in, I was specifically looking for a buffalo plaid. So I'm gonna type that in. And it gives you a couple here, not too much. Um, and this is the one that I chose. It's not the um, exact size that I want, but I'll show you how we can make it that way. So again, let's tap it, pre-download, download, not a robot, and download. And you'll see that will go up there. So now let's go back to Procreate and let's go to our wrench, add, and insert a file. And I'm gonna go to, um, on my iPad, no, I'm gonna to go to my iCloud Drive and find uh, downloads right here. Um, you can also, if you scroll down, it might be in your favorites right there, but if not, then you can go to your iCloud Drive and find downloads. And here is my brown paper, so I'm gonna tap that, and that's going to import into there for me. And um, while we're at it, let's bring in the plaid one. No, not desktop, downloads. I want downloads. My cloud drive, where my downloads go? Oh, there it is. And bring in the plaid. And then tap off. Okay. So for right now, I'm just going to hide that plaid layer and work with the um, craft paper. So I wanna make sure I'm on that layer. And the craft paper, I want to uh, fit inside um, the red. I wanna have the red border showing, maybe like a quarter inch on each side. So I have to subtract a half inch from the four inches, which will give us 3.5 inches. 3.5 times 300, let's go to our arrow tool here. So unlink it and 3.5 times 300 is 1,550 times um, 5.25 inches. So we're going to minus a half an inch for that, which is gonna give us 4.75 times 300 is going to be 1,425, okay? And then we can click off of there. And now we're going to line that up so it is in the center. Now we can see it's in the center there, um, but we can't quite see if it's in the center on the red. So we might wanna turn on Uh, our template so we can see that blue and I might um, might just nudge it over just a smidge maybe about right there okay and now I want to also add in the buffalo plaid so let's do the same thing with that um, this one I also want to be a little bit smaller. So let's turn on our buffalo plaid. And if we, um, uh, we could turn it this way and fit it inside, but it's still not wide enough. So we could make it larger that way. But I want, I don't want my plaid boxes to be so big. I want them to be a little bit smaller. So to do that, Let's put it back to where it was. Uh, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. So let's go to the layers, slide it to the left and choose duplicate. And then I can slide it up. Um, 
Now, if this was a repeat pattern, that would have lined up nicely, but you see that block is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go back and just move that down and eyeball it until it looks like it's lined up. And when it is, then I'm going to merge these two layers by pinching them together. Okay, so now I can have, and now I'm just gonna re, uh, kind of eyeball this and resize it. Okay, and I'm just going to cut um, that piece out by going to the selection tool. I'm going to go to rectangle, turn off color fill. And let's just put our pencil down where you want the uh, border to start and then just slide it down to select all of the portion that I wanna cut off. And when I let go, I can do a three finger swipe down. Whoops, three finger swipe down and choose cut and that will snip that off for us and then we can just go back in and center that a little more nicely. I also want to add some corners to look like the plaid is tucked in behind the craft paper and to do that I went to the craft paper back to the selection tool. They don't have a selection for a triangle so we're going to freehand a triangle and I'm going to start my triangle outside of the craft paper. So I'm just going to tap outside the corner and you can see it's going to give me a little starting point there. And then I'm going to kind of have a little invisible line coming down and keeping it outside of the brown paper. I'm going to tap the second point. If I zoom in, you can see it gave me some little dotted lines there. Then I'm going to kind of do an invisible line across, tap outside the brown paper again, and then meet up back to my starting point. And that is um, selected that. Now we can continue selecting in the next one by doing the same thing, just kind of drawing, freehanding a triangle. Okay, now that we have our four corners selected, three fingers swipe down and choose duplicate. Now what that did is it put those four corners in a layer by itself and we're gonna drag this layer above the um, buffalo plaid. And now you can see my corners aren't exactly lined up nicely and that's okay. I'm just gonna go in and erase some of that off. Um, to kind of like this one has more on it than this one does so I'm going to erase a little bit off of here so let's go to our eraser tool and I'm just going to drag and draw a line and hold it in place so it kind of snaps until it kind of matches up to the other side maybe down here a little bit Okay, that's good enough. Now I want to make this look like it's actually layered on top of each other. So to do that, let's put in some drop shadows. Um, and the easiest way I think to do that is uh, we're gonna duplicate this layer. So slide it to the left and tap duplicate. And we're gonna make this one black. So to change that to black, let's go and select that color, tap the layer and choose select. And at the bottom down here, we're gonna hit color fill. And now that has filled that layer with black and we want to blur it. So let's go to the magic wand in our adjustments menu, Gaussian blur, 
and slide our finger from left to right until you can see that start to blur there. So I'm going to leave it at 5%. And when I'm done, I'm going to tap off. Um, but if you see in the original one I did, um, I like right here, it looks like this corner is on top and I don't want that. I want it to look like the corner is tucked under. So again, I'm just going to go in and erase the part that's going over and the outside too. Now that looks like it's tucked underneath. Okay, now continuing with these shadows, I want to add a shadow behind the brown paper. So let's go to the brown paper layer and I'm gonna duplicate it. So slide it to the left and duplicate. And on the bottom layer, I want to fill this with black. So an easy way to do that is tap it and choose select. Make sure you're on black and down at the bottom, make sure color fill is on and that has changed that to black. And now I'm going to go to the magic wand for our adjustments menu and tap Gaussian blur using my finger, slide it from left to right, about two or 3%, 2% looks good. Tap off and now you can see like a really faint shadow. Um, so it looks like the paper is sitting on top of the striped paper. And uh, now I also want to have a shadow for the plaid paper. But before I do that shadow, I wanna include my cutout so that has a shadow too. So let's go to the plaid layer and add a new layer above that. And now I am going to choose a stamp. You can hand draw whatever shape you like or use whatever shape Procreate stamp you like. Um, I am going to use a stamp that I have from my Christmas stamp set. Um, and this one I will um, provide the free stamp for the tree one here for you to use. And let's just say about a size 25 and just tap somewhere in the middle. And then we can then go into our transform tool and center that. That's pretty good, close enough. Okay, now we don't want that black. We actually want that cut out, but let me show you how we could do that. So we're gonna turn this layer off, but we're gonna select it. So it's, we're showing Procreate or telling Procreate, select this shape, so select, but this time turn off color fill because we just, we don't. it's already black, we don't wanna fill it. We just want to select it. And then we're gonna go to the layer that we want to cut out of that shape which is the plaid layer, tap it and choose clear. So now um, it kind of cookie cuttered out that shape for us. So now we're gonna go to our plaid layer and duplicate it like we did with the brown paper. We're gonna go to the one on the bottom, tap it and choose select, turn color fill back on so it fills it with black. And then we're gonna go to our adjustments wand and go to Gaussian Blur, and let's blur that. Um, anywhere from like three to 5%, I think would be good. Four might be too much. 3% looks good. And then turn that off. And now you can see there is some shadows behind the paper. Um, if you wanted to uh, make it look like the shadow is coming from a certain direction, you could always nudge the shadow down a little bit. Um, for this card, I just left it where it's at, but if you wanted to nudge it, you can go to the arrow and tap outside of the box a couple times to nudge it. So that will um, move the shadow down and 
in the direction you want to nudge, but then you're going to have to go back in and clean up those extra lines. So it looks like it has more of a shadow on the right and bottom than it does on the top and left. But I'm just going to undo that for now. There. And just leave that how we have it. Okay. Now this is the... Um, basic part of our card. If you wanted to lighten that shadow a little bit, sometimes I like to do that so it's not such a harsh shadow, you can tap the end and turn the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to put mine at about 85. And now um, if you wanted to kind of keep your card organized, you can group all of these into one layer. So like I could group um, the brown layer. To group it, you can slide each item to the left, to the right until they're blue, and then choose group. And then you can collapse that and then just easily turn off those layers. So for the tree layer, I would combine those, tap group, and you can easily turn that off and add in another paper. This is why I like to keep these layers separate. And then our corners, we're going to group those so we could turn those off easily if we wanted. Okay, and then we have our red background here that's by itself and our template. So now um, the next step I want to add is some lettering inside. You can leave it um, like it is or maybe just add, you know, draw in some ornaments or buttons or whatever you like, but I have a message inside mine. So I want that to be underneath the plaid layer, but above the brown layer. So I'm going to go to the brown layer and choose a plus sign. So now my layer for my text is going to be um, in between those two. And let's go to our text tool, which is under the wrench and then add and then add text and we get this little blue text box here that I'm going to move and center by dragging these circles. I'm just going to line them up with the edges of the plaid card to get them centered and at the bottom uh, I want to edit this text so I'm going to tap these double A's to bring up the formatting menu and um, you can choose any font you like uh, for mine, I used a font called Magic Winter Slab. This is a font I got from Font Bundles, and I can leave the link for you if you like. And let's go to the keyboard and type in whatever message we want. So mine said we, and then enter, wish, enter, you, a, enter. Happy enter holiday. Now you can say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry everything, um, whatever you want your message to say. But you can see it's much bigger than what we want. So uh, what I want to do is um, move these lines between or the spaces between the words closer together um, instead of making the font smaller because if I make the text smaller, it's going to be really hard to read. I like it this size, but I just want it squished together more. So um, let's go back in and edit this. So I'm just going to tap there, go back to the double A's. And like I said, I don't want to mess with the size because you see um, that makes it hard to read. So let me undo that. What we want to mess with is the um, leading. So we're going to turn the leading down. So the words are closer together but not touching. And then I can move this up a little bit. And now I can go in and play with the size, make a little bit smaller. And I see I spelled holiday wrong. And I'm just kind of nudging that around until it's centered. And you can hit done. So um, to fix that typo, I'm going to tap in there again and tap it to add my cursor there. Then I can delete and make that the I. Uh, the other thing I can do is uh, with this font is if you hit these two capital T's that will make all of it a uh, capital 
Well, first I have to select it all. So let's, I'm gonna do a triple tap to select all of it and then go to my A's and then turn on the T and you can see those are all now capital letters. If I turn it off, it's all lowercase. So I'm gonna keep it uh, like that. I, I kind of like how that looks. Okay, and then, um, so that is the front of our card that is done. On the back, you could um, have your logo, your signature, whatever. So I'm going to add a new layer and I'm gonna find my stamp. Where's my stamps? So um, let's say I wanna use this stamp. I can just stamp it there and slice that down in the back and center that. Um, maybe even change the color. If I don't like black, I could maybe even add some glitter over that to make it look like uh, foil or glitter, but, um, whatever. You can even play with the blend modes. So if you go into the end and maybe go down to overlay, that doesn't quite look right. Uh, we want to put it above here. Um, sorry, you could probably hear my uh, rats in the background. Let's keep it on normal, but maybe turn the opacity down. So there's different ways that you can play with it. Add your signature, your logo. I'm just gonna keep mine black for now. Okay, now I'm ready to print. So I want to take away this um, blue border. So I'm gonna turn that layer off. And to print this, I'm gonna go to my wrench and share. And it's asking how I want to share it. You can use um, PDF, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, whatever you like. Uh, let's just, I'm gonna go with PNG and I'm gonna hit print. And uh, this is my printer. Um, you can go to, uh, depending on your printer setups, I'm gonna go to media quality and I'm gonna say best. I want this to print in the best quality and then hit print. I don't know why I'm, I've been having a glitch with mine where it's saying it's unsuccessful, but if um, I just wait a second, like you can hear my printer is starting to print. So I just let that finish. And then um, I don't know if this, if mine just needs an update or whatever, um, but after it starts printing, then I hit okay. And it seems to do okay that way. And then, um, when it's done printing, I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so let me just move my iPad out of the way and I can show you what the printed version looks like. So you would just cut uh, around here, fold your card in half. Um, and again, this is a cardstock paper that I use versus uh, copy paper here. Um, you can probably still hear it printing in the background, but um, you could see again, this is much more vibrant than the cardstock, but because the paper is so thin, it's already starting to um, crumble, wilts, whatever you call that. So if, like I said earlier in the beginning, if you like this version better, you might cut and paste or tape on top of the cardstock one. But let me go ahead and cut this. You can use scissors or um, I have a paper cutter here. And I'm just going to line up my okay. This is hard to do in camera. piece off. Line this one up. My rat 
cats are really busy in the background. Okay, let me put that aside. And now we have our card here. And I'm going to line it up. And if you remember, the first card had a little tiny bit of an overhang off the edge. Uh, so you can choose to do that or um, line it up as best you can with the corners. I'm going to have a little bit of an overhang on mine. And I don't have a bone folder, so I'm just using my fingers. Like I said, I usually don't do a lot of uh, printable things. I usually do mostly digital things. Um, so you would fold that down. And now we have a really cute little card. You could, if you have a double-sided printer, print on the inside. Um, but let's just grab this envelope and make sure that this fits. And that is perfect. And then my holiday cards are ready to go. So thanks for watching and happy holidays if you celebrate the holidays. And if not, have a safe and cozy winter. Thanks for watching.